Hey guys, welcome back. So we got all the easy stuff done. The armature, uh, exciter motor, or also known as the bonus motor. Now, it's been a battle. And the last thing to do is this dater. So I've been doing a lot of thinking. I've been reading your comments. And probably the best thing to do would be just to sell this as motors. You know, if the other stuff kicked my bum, this is not going to be an easy task. The walls are, as you can see, like an inch and a half. They're welded to the stator core. And uh, I don't know. Like I say, the, the smart thing to do would be sell for motors. But that's what, but that's not what you guys came here for. You came here to see some copper. So, you know what? Forget all that. We're just going to do it anyways. That's right. We're going to take the copper out. I don't even care if it kills me. It's coming out. Plan of attack is to cut those things off, which are copper. Um, just the, the little nuggets up there are aluminum, but the main shafts going into it are all copper. I turn around and scratch them up and uh, yeah, they're copper. So anyways, as I was saying before I so rudely interrupted myself, we're going to cut this crown out first. Well, first we're going to take those alien looking things off. Then we're going to cut that crown off. Then we're going to come to this side and we're going to yank on that bugger. And to help me do that, I picked up this five foot aligning pry bar. It's got a point on the end. So, should be able to dig into the copper. Five feet is a lot of prying force. And it's heavy. So I picked that up at Princess Auto for uh, $54. And uh, I'm always a little scared about buying tools from Princess Auto. But hey, if I bend that, they've got some bigger issues than just weak steel. So I'm going to get set up and we'll get at it. Copper in there. So now we're going to cut that ring off and I'm going to do that off camera 
because nobody wants to see me do that for an hour. And I'll get back to you. So we got the crown off. Um, it's funny, I was using the Canadian Tire Mastercraft blades and the first half took me five hours and 14 blades. The second half I bought Lincolnson blades from Amazon and uh, it took um, 45 minutes and a half a blade to do the other side. So these are what the blades look like. This is how much of the blade I have left. So now the next plan of attack is to free up, free up some of this. I'm going to connect my come along to it and try and yank out at least the first two or three bunches and then uh, we'll see how that goes. And uh, if that works, I'll be doing it all by come along. So I just made a hole for the come long. I'll slip the hook in there and see if we can't crank that out. So here goes the first attempt. So this is the second attempt. Put a shackle, a snatch block, hooked it up over there to the come along. 
back to the frame, put this jacket in here so this, if this cable decides to snap, it won't cut me in half. Use that fence post as uh, leverage for the come along. And this is the result. It's actually twisting the angle iron. And now it's up about that much. That's crazy. So I think what I need to do is try it from the bottom. There might be too much angle. And maybe I'll re-rig for the bottom. And uh, we'll try it from there. It's crazy stuff. Well, I re-rigged and I pulled from the bottom instead. I pulled from the bottom instead and I got one side out. So that's not exactly what I wanted. I'm still taking it as a success. I'm thinking I'm thinking I'll do another one right beside it and uh, then maybe I could wrap that copper around that shackle. Maybe I'll do that first, wrap the wire around the shackle and see if I can't pull the rest of it out because then I would have two sides that would, that might be an idea. I think that's what I'll do. So it looks like the weather's going to cooperate with us. What I did today was an, I unbolted a stator from that skid. And the reason I did that is because no matter what I did, I was bending up come alongs, nothing was working. So, um, and I figured, okay, if I've got to remove the copper the old-fashioned way, I need this at a better working height because bending over for hours at a time doesn't work. So now I'm just going to cut this crown off. And, uh, or I should say this other crown off. Uh, hopefully this will loosen it up and we can get some production. So we got the crown cut off, the second crown, which was a little bit of a bear, but hey, why not? So after all that, I thought, okay, now this should just push out easy. I was wrong. So I'm going to go over and show you what I did. So right here. I used that rod and all it did was bend the, the copper over. So the only thing left I can do is to cut one of these out and try and pull it out. I'm actually leaning towards just sending it the way it is because I did I did um, some math, so that's 12 gauge wire, and it's 19.8 pounds for every thousand feet of uh, stripped 12 gauge wire. So, according to the math, that's only 1.6 pounds per hole so 1.6 pounds per hole that's uh, roughly about six dollars and fifty cents worth of copper in each hole now if it takes me any more than 20 minutes it's just really not worth it but we'll give it a shot I could be wrong 
But if not, I'm probably going to send this off as copper bearing motor. I'll probably only get 20, 25 cents a pound, but there's probably 3,000 pounds right there. So, you know, do the math. It's almost not worth it to go after that little bit of copper. I know it looks like a lot of copper. And if you do the math, it is a lot of copper. But how much time are you willing to to lose doing this when I could be doing other things and making a hundred buck an hour? I don't know if that makes any sense to you. But anyways, I'll get set up. And oh, by the way, those insulating strips are fiberglass. And they've been fiberglassed into that motor. So I have to wear a mask. It's going to be dusty. I'll set up the camera and you guys can watch. So that was five minutes, 37 seconds. I got four and a half strands out. It started breaking. I've already cut myself. It's too dusty. So, apologize to y'all. The rest of this is going to the scrap yard. I'm just gonna clean up the little bit of wires I can get at. And that would be the end of that. Um, like, if you guys have any suggestions, I'll have it around for a couple days. But next week, it's going to be in the scrapyard. So if you come up with any ingenious ways of how to strip this thing out in a quick and efficient manner, I'm all for it. But I've broken two come alongs I've cut both crowns off I've tried pulling it I've tried it's insane and even digging it out by hand is not the answer you can't push it out because all that does is bend this thing is fiberglassed in and I'd love to hear your ideas so these two totes have the crown material in it and according to the scale 83.75 I would say five pounds a tote though so 73.75 pounds of copper in the crowns so here we have the exciter or bonus motor as i like to call it and that is uh, 55.95 pounds take five pounds off for the for the um, tote so this tote is the armature the final weight on the armature is 234.55 pounds let's say five pounds for the tote so that's not bad at all thanks for watching 
Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and that was some nice junk. Catch you all next week.